Welcome everybody to the module four recap this time around. Um, in module four, basically what I did was I covered fluid kinematics. So far, in module one, we introduced you some fluid properties and parameters that will be important. Modules two and three were reserved for fluid statics. Now I will be looking at things that there's a flow, all right? Um, that obviously this will add some complexity to my analysis, okay? But before going further, I introduced a few important concepts as well. The first one was the reference frames. We introduced Eulerian reference frame. We introduced Lagrangian reference frame. The Eulerian reference frame was the one that you were more familiar with, okay? I have the origin positioned outside of my flow. It's not moving with the flow. The second, which is a little bit more tricky, is the Lagrangian reference frame. In that, basically, I fix my origin into one of the fluid particles, and I look at with respect to each other, how this particular flow particle is moving with respect to another one that I selected as the origin. Okay? Unfortunately, most of the things that we will be dealing with, with in this module and further modules will be in the Lagrangian, but as we'll find out, at the end of this module, we introduce a theorem that converts from one reference frame to another reference frame. So at the end of the day, it will not matter too much. Okay? After that, I introduced you whether a flow is 1D, 2D, or 3D. Okay? And I told you that you need to look at the velocity. What is the velocity a function of? It's a function of x, y, and z. Then it will be 3D. If it's an x and z, as an example, 2D, if the velocity is only a function of x, then it will be just a single 1D case. After that, I introduced you the steady and unsteady flow. That will be very, very important, okay? That will make a huge difference in the way that we analyze the system. And I introduced you the definition of steady, obviously. And what I said was, if something is a function of time, that is unsteady. If something is not a function of time, then it is steady, okay? And I gave you examples from the real life perspective, some good examples that will fit the both categories. After that, I switched gears a bit. I introduced something called the streamline, streak line, and path lines. And I said that for steady, that's why I introduced steady first, for steady, those three definitions are identical. There is no differences between those three. If this is an unsteady though, there are differences. And I explain what a streamline is. Basically, it is the line that the velocity is tangent to, right? And in addition to the definition of the streamline, I gave you the definition for a stagnation point that is very important for the fluid dynamics. And also I introduced you what is the equation of a streamline. Um, after that, I gave you the definition of the streak line as well as the path line. And then I went ahead and solved an example problem where you have observed that what happens to these streamlines, streak lines, and path lines for a steady as well as unsteady case. And after that, what I did was I derived the acceleration field. And one thing interesting from that was it was fairly complicated. That's number one. Number two was that I introduced you something called the material derivative. Because the mathematical operators that we are used to, everything is defined in the Eulerian reference frame. If I'm using Lagrangian, there will be a different set of symbols for these mathematical operators. I introduced you the capital D, which is the material derivative. And then I went back a bit, actually. I went back to my thermodynamics concepts, right? So I introduced you to a system. What is a control mass? And what is a control volume? And the control volume will be very important to me. Okay, we'll be using this very commonly. And I also showed you that if I have a control volume, that doesn't have to be stationary. It can be deforming, so this balloon, right? Or it can be something like moving as well. Then I introduced you one of the most important theorems in fluid dynamics, and it's called the Reynolds Transport Theorem, RTT. Okay? So this is the basis of, the, of conservation of mass, which is module 5, conservation of momentum, which is module 6, and conservation of energy, which is module, module 7. And along with this conservation of energy, I will drive you the Bernoulli's equation. So this fundamental theorem is very important. Okay. And I actually will go ahead and put the um, equation up here. And if you look at the left-hand side of the equation, that is in the Lagrangian reference frame. The entire right-hand side is in the Eulerian. I said that the Lagrangian is a bit more complicated, but mathematically speaking, it's not. As you can see, it's much more simpler. Right? 
the Eulerian is we are more, much more used to it, but it's longer as you can see. And on the left hand side, you see here DBDT, right? This capital D is the material derivative, D is the extensive property. On the right hand side, you will see a lowercase b, that means the extensive property per unit mass, which is called the intensive property. Density is rho, d volume will be dx, dy, dz, or if you are using the polar coordinates, that's going to be dr, d theta times dz, right? Um, and the next term, the last term on the right hand side, is written for a control surface, and control surface is the boundary of the control volume. And I introduce you B, lowercase b, times rho, times v, dot n, times dA. And at that over there, the v dot n seems a bit complicated. And what I did was, I showed you that this v dot n, if I have neither an inlet nor an exit, and I gave you two cases, one where we followed the no-slip condition, and the second one there was a slip, and I showed you that both cases will be zero, so that term will vanish. And I said that if I have an exit, I'm going to get a plus V. I have an inlet, I'm going to get a negative V, right? So this V dot N is actually fairly simple. That may look a little bit complicated from the mathematics standpoint, but it helps me in my analysis. And as you remember, or if you watch the lecture videos, you will find out that I did not even specify what is the X direction or the Y direction. So these are independent of the coordinate axis that we have.